Hi, welcome to my first day of Christmas crafting. Day one, Christmas crafts, Christmas gifts. It's, I'm gonna try and do, um, I'm hoping to do a video every day. And um, from now until Christmas, uh, hope. But I will, can guarantee you I'll do at least 12, but we'll see how far I get. So the, today what we are making, or what I'm gonna show you a little tutorial on is making tin can earrings. Believe it or not, these are made from tin cans. All of them. And painted with alcohol inks and they are um, fun. So fun, so easy, and you can get a lot out of a tin can. So I can't tell you what tin can exactly each one are made of, but I think back then I was drinking Arizona iced tea, so I have a feeling they might be from that, but it could be anything because it got to be one point where um, I was using anything. So let me just show you how we're going to begin. Let's just begin our little tutorial. Now, I will tell you, I made all of these, I think, well, no, some of my freehand cut, but most of them I made using a, a big shot or a die cutting machine. Um, these I made with a punch. These long ones I cut freehand, but the these I made from a, a Sizzix Biggs die, I think. These I made from a Sizzlitz die, and these I made from just little those little thin metal dies. You know, like a Framelitz die, the ones that are just got the frame around them. Out of all the dies I used, I will tell you, the Biggs die works the best. The ones that are the really fat dies, um, they, I found those the easiest to work with, but you know, you can use whatever you have in your stash. Okay, here we go. I'm gonna, let's get started and um, with our fun little, and I'll set these, uh, this, with our fun little tutorial. So the first thing that you wanna do is you want to, decide whether like the ones I'm making right here I've actually made them from a rockstar can and I left the rockstar part on the back okay you can see where I cut them out using a die cutting machine where I cut them out and the back sides silver and this is just the rockstar and I ran them through my die cutting machine and I cut them out this way now you want to you can make a choice if, it, if you are into, if it doesn't bother you that they have that on the back, just leave it. It's much easier to do it that way. But if you do, now if you look at all the ones I've made, if you do mind, you have to sand them. Now these are all double-sided, but you don't have to paint both sides. So let me just show you how I started. The first thing you're going to do, if you're going to sand your pieces of metal. First, you, you can use any pair of household scissors to cut your can apart. So the first thing you wanna do is cut your paint can apart, cut the top off and cut the bottom off and thoroughly wash and dry it, okay? Now, I would tell you to use your least expensive pair of household scissors that you have currently in your stash and then make them designated metal scissors. You don't wanna go back and cut other things with them. So. Find a cheap, inexpensive pair of household scissors. Now, if you do decide that you want to sand, I'm using some automotive grit sandpaper, some 320. You don't have to have automotive grit. This is, this is just what I had. You can use anything. I think these I sanded with just really fine grit wood sandpaper, like whatever, 220, something like that. Now the key to sanding your metal is you want to sand in a circular motion because you don't want to put a lot of stress on your metal. This is aluminum and aluminum is very is brittle to begin with. And the more you work metal, the worse like it, the harder it gets. It work hardens and it can become brittle. So then when you put it through a die cutting machine or you put it through mostly when you put it through the embossing phase of it, it can crack and I'll show you a couple pieces of what it looks like that. So you want to sand in a circular motion and the reason you want to sand in a circular motion if you're going to sand is if you can look closely you can see 
you know, the, the marks that the sandpaper makes. Now, it doesn't really matter so much if you're going to put them through a die cut, um, put them through a embossing folder, but all the same, you still, you want to, it also helps you to not put so much pressure in one area. So, you know, you can sand in a figure eight or sand in a circular motion, and you want to sand lightly. You know, you don't want to put a lot of pressure. It may take you a little bit longer than, say, if you're really rubbing and putting pressure. But the more pressure you put on it, the more you work harden and make the metal brittle. So then when you stick it through your, your uh, die cutting machine or through your embossing folder, it can crack. What I'm going to show you using this is that, you know, you can also use a punch. Now I don't have a lot of punches, but I do have a few, and you can definitely make these using a punch. So I would tell you pick the simpler um, things that you have, the simpler punches or the simpler um, dies. You know. It's really super thin metal, and you know, at first I was super ambitious when I made these. I made these a couple of years ago. I started making them, and I was trying to use the really intricate dies. They would get stuck or ruin my die. You know, I'm just, or you wouldn't be able to get it out. But you know, you'll you'll figure it out. It's a trial and error sort of thing. Now, what's neat about this is that you know, if you wanted to. If you wanted to go ahead and just paint on top of them with like acrylic paint or do some use a stencil and use your alcohol inks or whatever fun painting technique you want to use you could do it what I've done is I have been taking mine or using a an embossing folder now it doesn't matter so much when the pieces are sanded like this because um, both sides are going to be you know usable but it does kind of matter when you decide to leave it which way you put it in your embossing folder when you leave the printed matter from your can on the back do you want the letter do you want it raised like these or do you want it do you want it indented like these so if you leave the, the bits on the back it does matter if, when you put them in your embossing folder yeah, I moved all of my stuff over here so that I could do all of it right here, and um, it, it, it's, it's good and it's bad, and I'm, all, I'm used to being spread out, so sort of, I can do, I don't know if you can hear it, but it's so windy here. Now, you only want to run it through your embossing, with your embossing folder, through your die cutting machine once when you're embossing. You don't want to run it back and forth and I'll show you why. Because it, because it's me, it's aluminum and it's really thin metal, it can crack. So these, hang on. The, this is how it came out. So you can see one side has the indentions in and then the other side it's raised. Okay? Now, I did these earlier, and look, they cracked. Now, I think it was because I sanded too hard. I was trying, in a hurry trying to get set up to make a video for you guys. And this is what happens when you sand too much. So you want to definitely not sand as much. Now, at this point, you can decide, are you painting with I, these? I painted with acrylic paint. I painted with metallic acrylic paint. Um, it doesn't matter what brand it's just inexpensive metallic acrylic paint or if you want to use your alcohol inks now for those of you and or this one was done with fingernail polish now for those of you that have never used alcohol inks I like the way the alcohol inks look a lot but you can't control it so you know it makes it much more difficult so I'll show you just the painting of the of the acrylic painting part so you can just see what I do my fancy paintbrush my q-tip the first thing I do when I'm using acrylic paint on them is I just give the whole thing a good coat it's gonna be trans it's gonna leave some translucency especially when you use the metallic acrylic paints 
I have never painted them with opaque ones, but you could try anything, you know? And, um, you know, you may like it just like this. Now what I would do is, this is my first layer of acrylic paint, I would do more than one. I would let this layer thoroughly dry, unless you like it just like that, I would let this layer thoroughly dry, and then I would go back, especially with this metallic acrylic paint, and I might go over some of the more raised details of my embossing. Now you can use a paintbrush. This just happened to be what I had because I was going to use, um, because I was going to use the uh, alcohol inks, and I I use Q-tips with it. I, I just find it more successful in this. I am by no means the expert of alcohol inks, so if any of you guys have tips, so you can see like one coat, and then. I'm sorry, my hands are so dirty from the alcohol inks. Okay, one coat, and then one coat gone back over with a little bit of detail. And these all still have the rock star on the back. I actually like that. You know me, I'm really big into recycling, and I don't mind everybody knowing that I handmade them a gift out of something that would have been thrown in the trash. So this one I'm going to do, let's see, do I want... Let's do the raised one. I haven't done the raised side in a long time, so I'm just make sure it's like dry, whatever I've got on there. Okay, so I'm just gonna use a few dots. Now, if you wanted to do both sides, you wanna let it dry in between coats, okay? And you, and you kinda wanna be careful because when you put it on, on one side, it does leak over to the other side. Just dab and dot. And if any of you have ever used alcohol inks, you know it has a mind of its own. Now, if you are very exacting or need matching things, the alcohol inks may not be for you because I can tell you, aside from just making something a solid color, getting something to match using an, using alcohol inks has not been my forte. Maybe you guys have better luck than I do, at least in this way. I haven't, I don't really use them. I, I, you know what, I can't say that. I do use them sometimes in my journals, but most of the time I, I use them on embellishments and stuff like that so as you can see this is one and let's see what number two is going to end up looking like now you know as well if you've ever used alcohol inks if you add more to it it's going to completely change the color so if it's not if it's something kind of like let it just let it be you can you can really um change the whole thing I used I was getting it to where I really loved it and then I would oh just a little bit more I'll add just a little bit more and uh, anyway you know if you're an alcohol if you've ever worked with alcohol inks exactly what I mean now they do have these mixatives and those work really well I really enjoyed working with those I just don't have any right in front of me to show you but you know experiment it's a tin can it was, it was a soda can, you know, you, you enjoyed the soda, you paid for the soda, the rest is extra. So I don't know what you guys are making for Christmas, but maybe this will give you a few little ideas of something very inexpensive to make. Very inexpensive. I think, I can't remember, but way back when I was really seriously doing this, or really seriously making them, I think I got something like 18 pair out of a large Arizona iced tea can. So you can kind of see, I don't know how good the, how good you can see with this. You can kind of see, you know, it has a life of its own, but it's really fun and unique. Now, you know, you want to let it completely dry because the other side, see what I told you about how it's going to bleed on the other side? It definitely does. You know, I must have laid it in a puddle or it dripped over from the other side. It just happens. So just know that so if you don't, if you like the front side of what you've painted, then go and get some clear nail polish, clear nail varnish, and varnish the side that you like, and then turn it over to paint the other side. All right, how are you gonna get the holes in it? All right, so I use a very important tool. 
push pin. <laughs> just decide where you want your hole. And let me see, one of these I did already. Decide where you want your hole and you want to tap it in. Let me just show you really quick. Sorry, if you can, hopefully you can see this. It's a self-healing mat. You know, this one, it was, I quilt and do all kinds of stuff. So it was from my sewing. So you just want to push it in and you do it with just your hand. You know, I've been a, a jeweler for a long time and one of the best advice someone ever gave me when I began making jewelry is your hand is your best tool because if you can do it by hand instead of using a, a, a tool, chances are you won't ruin your metal. So, and it, this is very brittle metal, so you definitely, you know, you want to turn it around and don't force it and just keep turning and turning and turning and turning back and forth until the push pin goes through. Okay, and now you have a little hole for your ear wire. So I make my own ear wires, but in this case, because when I was making these earrings, I was, you know, they were so inexpensive. I bought a whole package of really inexpensive ear wires at a, at a regular craft store or at a novelty store, actually, it's like a big box store type. So they're going to come with this rounded part. You need a pair of flat nose pliers. Okay. That's what these are. These are flat nose pliers and these are really, these have had seen better days. Okay. And you want to, it, they come closed like this and you want to open it up so that you can put it onto your earring. Now, depending upon where you put the hole, you don't, you want to put the holes closer to the edge because the further down you put them, if you don't have an extra jump ring or you're not, you know, putting beads in between it with metal, with, um, with other wire, it makes it easier to put through your earring. Okay. Once you've threaded it through, then all you want to do is take your pliers and close it back up. Now these are stainless steel ear wires. I would suggest because people have so many ear wire allergies that, you know, you just put stainless steel ear wires on them and then you can put a little note on the earrings and say, these have stainless steel ear wires. If you would like to have, um, you know, sterling silver, please, you know, get those at your own, you know, find those on your own or change out a pair of earrings or that sort of thing. You can also get other metals, but you know, this is the most readily available at, um, at most craft stores. Okay, there we go. I want some movement in it, and I must have punched the hole a little too high. So hang on, let me just adjust it. You know, I did these, and I gave them away to my daughter's teachers. One of my, I, have a, I think you guys all know I have three daughters, and... I gave them all to my daughter's, my youngest daughter, who's 10, but who was like seven or eight at the time. I gave them to her teachers and they just loved it. First of all, that they were made from recycled tin cans. And I also did this project with her. So she did the painting. You know, I may have cut them out, but there you get it, right? Super inexpensive, cost of a soda, plus, you know, what you already have in your craft room. Now, what I was going to show you, mm, I know what I was going to show you. Let me find, show you some, what I did, how I, how I packaged them. Okay. So what I did was these were just, um, it was just an eight and a half by 11 piece of cardstock and I gridded it out and then I wrote on a, a white sheet of paper, I hand wrote now all my info on the back, right? I'm gonna cover that up because it's not valid anymore. But I used to have a business called Aloha Studios, right? And I, it's just so simple. So if you're gonna do a craft fair or anything like that, and now and you can make made and made recycled and you know, it's just so fun. So anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed my little getting ready for Christmas first day of Christmas share. Um, I have a little, I, I did a, a, a giveaway earlier today and I think I feel like doing another giveaway now. So if you like 
and subscribe and if you subscribe and like and comment I would love to win a pair of your earrings I will enter you into the drawing and today is the first of December so let's say you have from now the first of December till the third of December to till the third of December I will do a drawing and I live in Hawaii so say I'll do it in the evening in Hawaii like 5 p.m. Hawaii time and I will post the winners so you have to like my video subscribe and make a comment and tell me what you want what's on your Christmas crafty list and um, I will give away to let's say 10 people 10 of you 10 random 10 based on random.org so 10 10 lucky winners and um, anyway thank you guys always for supporting me for um, you know just going on this crafty journey with me happy holidays and I hope this helps you get a few of your Christmas presents done and take care and I, I wish you the most aloha and just a wonderful wonderful evening take care